Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Now this video is me talking about the importance of changing habits, leaving our comfort zone for long term results, for long lasting freedom. Now, when we change habits, this isn't something that just happens overnight. Now as Ray, as Ray Dalio puts it, as Nick puts it, I think a good estimate of how long that can take is 18 months of patience, persisting, keep putting in the practice, keep focusing on changing habits, slipping up, keep focusing. Because if you expect to change a habit within, let's say, two weeks, OK, you might let let's use an example here. Let's say you want to read more. OK, let's say you're not reading many books and the aim is to read more. Now, for two weeks straight, you could be reading a lot more, but then all of a sudden it's, oh yeah, I got sidetracked here. Oh yes, I had this distraction. Oh yes, I went on holiday. Oh, my work got busy. Oh, this happened in my family. And then all of a sudden that habit's forgotten about it. And then back down the non-reading spiral you go. Okay. Now I would say 18 months is a very, very good estimate. And that is for long lasting change. That is when the habit turns into just a, a natural thing of doing where you don't even think about it. For example, with me, you know, let's use reading again as an example. I wasn't much of a reader. When I first came through the door um, in 2019, I didn't read anything. Um, I read sort of sport books, you know, magazines and things like that. I read obviously articles and stuff, but I wasn't didn't read any books. I had books, but I didn't really read them because I was so consumed in OCD cycle. Felt like I couldn't concentrate. Felt like I couldn't focus. Felt like I was reading the same page about a million times because it wasn't going in. You know, I'm sure you know that feeling all too well. So I used to put down the book, didn't want to read. I thought, how can a book make me get any better? How can I get any insight from a book? You know, <laughs> what a stupid thing to say, but that's how I felt. You know, I read all the time now. But to get to that stage, that was persisting with reading. Even at times where I felt like the last thing I want to do is sit down and read a book. I was going to read anyway. OK, I read many, many books now um, and 18 months to two years, I'd say that took it, that, that was probably the realistic amount of time it took to, to, to change that habit. Now, and it's become a natural thing. Now, reading is just part of my day. Never used to be. And that was maybe 15 pages a day for 18 months. Uh, maybe it was 30 pages a day. Um, of course, of course, there are times where the day can be incredibly busy, but we, it's about prioritizing this because if you're if you're willing to change a habit, we have to prioritize that. We can't just put on the back burner. So at times, maybe when I was really hectic, I was still making sure I gave 15 pages minimum a day, 20 pages, 30 pages um, and then more. Great. Just not finding excuses because it's so easy to find an excuse. It's so easy to justify why um, not changing the habit is easy or why staying in the comfort zone is easy. And that leads me on to my next point, how the biggest thing, you know, when I speak to people in coaching calls, the biggest thing that holds people back is the reluctancy to leave the comfort zone because hence why people coast. Hence why people just stay in a comfortable job. Nothing inherently wrong with that, but it's usually from a standpoint of not wanting to take that next step, not wanting to take that leap of, into discomfort. Because if you stay in a comfort zone, if you stay in the comfort bubble, in the comfort trap, then nothing's going to really change. Like if you didn't really change, attempt to change any habits or change any routines, change any structures, then you can't really expect any long lasting change. Now, I, this is a job I do now. I absolutely love doing this job, um, coaching OCD recovery and um, doing all the videos. And you know, I absolutely love being in, in the OCD community. But that didn't just happen. You know, I had to I had to build in lots of habits. I had to work two jobs for a time to, to build up and, you know, to, to, to perfect the craft, if you wish, and, and just and get better at it and learn from it and, and learn well could be better at this and could be better at that. And just time management as well. Um, and fitting fitting sort of slots in and you know bit uh, balancing things balancing maybe social life and then work life and balancing um, another job compared to this job you know it all involves compromise and balancing but if I just said nope this is too difficult no I've got to leave my comfort zone here nope I'm going to stay in my nine to five job um because it's easy it's it's comfortable it's 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 repetitive so I can just know what I'm doing it's safe you know I could have done that but I thought well Less, I want to change. I want to go down a different career path. I want. Um, I set career targets. I set financial targets. I set life targets. I set social targets. I set anything. And to achieve that, it doesn't just happen overnight. You don't just wake up and then you achieve that. It requires a lot of habit changes, uh, lifestyle changes. Um, maybe we, this is the thing when we lead into work-life balance. You know, if you're very rigid with that, 
then you, you're gonna you, you're gonna shut the door to many things and a lot of things just go by if we just focus on nope i'm working too much nope i'm not working enough you know if, if we have that rigid manner then, then things just go by without us realize, realizing and let me explain what i mean by that because if for example you didn't want to take that next leap into a career so let's say you're working a job you're working a nine to five office job and you think right do i want a promotion here do i want to earn more money do I want to give myself a better chance of sort of long term financial freedom or, or working freedom or whatever? OK, now to get to that, that might require or will require a lot of work with time management and change in habits and routines and structures. So you could say, well, no, I'm not going to make that change because this is easy. You could just look at the short term approach. We could just look at how you feel today or you can think, well, where am I going to be? in a year's time, in two years time, in five years time. Now, of course, it's balanced because I don't just think of the future all the time because I live in the now. I love living in the now. But it's, it's balanced with that because I'm not just focused on the now and not caring about the future. I've got one eye on the future, but also living in the now. Okay, You're never going to strike that perfect balance, but that's that's what I recommend and that's, that's what helps me. And here other people on the team and other people that I speak to, and it helps them because let's let's look at the odds. So you're probably going to live to about eighty years old, but there's obviously no guarantee. You could be dead tomorrow. I could be dead tomorrow. I could be dead at this call. I could I could die during this call. I could have a heart attack, um, and then boom, I could be dead. And then the video goes out, and then you see, you see me just die mid call. Um, let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, but the point is, you're looking. You've got one eye on the future. You're looking for the long term target. You're looking for the long term aim. No, you don't just not care about the now and just solely focus on that as a balance okay i work hard now in my job and in exercise and focus on the relationship with my partner and just focus on all different things with the eye of where's it going to get me in a year's time five years time ten years time that's why i did two jobs because i wanted to do this as a job and and, and it takes time and, and a lot of changes but if I just focus solely in the now, then I'd probably spend every last penny that I've got. I'd probably um, uh, <laughs> maybe go traveling and then not thinking about, oh, what about the money or what about life or what about um, sort of spending time with other people as well, building relationships, building careers. I wouldn't think about that because I'd just be focused on how I feel today and that instant gratification. I'd probably eat a lot of crap. I eat a lot of why if I'm going to be dead tomorrow, why don't I eat a load of KFC now? Why don't I eat a load of good food, a little steak? I probably drink a lot um, in terms of whether I like beer and I like wine. So I'd probably drink that. But the reason I don't is because I've got an eye on the future and the health benefits in the future. Because that's why I balance that and balance good food and balance spending money and balance traveling. and balance. Yes, it's I, I do more of that and maybe I do less of that. You can never strike a perfect balance is what I'm saying. But we have to look at long term and short term. OK, and um, just, just going back to my point of, of changing habits. Now, let's say you have the goal of recovery and, you know, very valid goal. You're watching this video, I'm sure. So let's say you have the goal of recovery. Now, if you just focus solely on the now and didn't look to change anything, then you can't really expect much to change because you still be doing compulsions. You're probably not reading much. Um, you, you, you're probably not leaving your comfort zone. You're probably not breaking down beliefs. Well, if you're not reading, you won't, you won't really be breaking down beliefs. You're probably not disputing much. You're probably not doing exposures now because that is probably you settle for how you feel today. You settle for the comfort of today. Now, with the long term aim of recovery in mind, that comes with chab uh, chabit changes. <laughs> habit changes, not chabit changes. <laughs> that comes with habit changes. So picking up the books, getting into a habit of reading, getting into a habit and a, and a structure of disputing irrational beliefs within balance, okay, not every minute of every day, no, but maybe uh, 30 minutes a day if, you, if you're new to that, or maybe once a week if you're into that and you're doing a bit too much, just finding the balance with that. Maybe you're um, leaving the comfort zone in regards to going towards things that usually trigger you. Uh, maybe you've got social anxiety, so maybe you're focused, okay, how can I do some public speaking? How can I maybe put myself in a, in a, in a, in a place where I'm usually anxious and going towards that, bringing that on? OK, um, maybe your things you're usually avoiding, you're going, you're not avoiding that, you're coming out, maybe you're doing more exposure, maybe you're doing more shame attacks, you know, maybe you're proactively working towards recovery and using the tools, the things that you learn in the one to one calls and, and applying that, having the application for that. And that obviously takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of change. OK, we can't underestimate the amount of change this takes. You know, OCD recovery isn't just a, a walk in the park, isn't a linear path. 
you know, you cannot underestimate how, how much effort and uh, it's not rocket science, but it takes a lot of change. It takes an overhaul of how we view things, a perspective change, belief change, behavior changes. Um, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's not just me, Rob, Mick, mom and just got lucky and just all oh, it's just happened for us. No completely focused on changing, um, going back, going forth, up and down, um, moments totally confused, totally lost, expecting a quick fix all the time. No, I had to drop all that. I had to be willing for it to take however it's going to take. Even if it took five years, even if it took 20 years, even if it took two months, you know, there was no time frame. I had to drop the time frame. Okay, and focused on what was going to be what was going to get me better, how I was going to get better and and not focusing on, on how long that was going to take and be willing for it to take as long as it was going to, to take or or not waiting for a change or not waiting for a drastic change of feelings going oh here we go wake up tomorrow oh, do i feel any do i feel any different well no have anything changed well no nothing's noticeably going to change within a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of months and even some people are in months or maybe even a year i, th- I still say don't expect much to change because realistically it takes it takes 18 months ray dalio says with, with habit changes and and just talking from personal experience 18 months two years three years four years to start seeing long lasting change because my biggest changes were when after setbacks as well because it, maybe i was getting a bit complacent i get a bit cocky coasting and then boom ocd would go right have this setback or maybe a stressful life event would happen and then uh, when you start seeing that as an opportunity to change rather than running from that, when you start seeing as, oh, here's a setback. Yes, you're going to feel crap. Yes, you're going to feel triggered. Obviously, I've been there. I'm not I'm not denying that. But try and take a step back and go, right, what can I learn from this? How can I use this to my advantage? How can I use this to my benefits? If you're watching this video now and you're having a big setback, having a big relapse, try and think, yes, I feel like shit, but... How do I use this to prolong the journey, that sort of prolong the recovery? And what I mean by that is how do I use this to get to the stage where I want to get to rather than seeing it as fuck, door closed, back to square one. No, that's the that's the act thing we don't go down because that shuts so many doors. It shuts off so many avenues. OK, so see it as an opportunity to change, a chance to get better, a chance to improve uh, and chance to really look at where you're going wrong within balance, not compulsively run into the notepad, not compulsively run into the books because you're feeling triggered, but seeing it as right. What can I learn from this? How can I improve myself, my emotional health from this, my chances of recovery from this setback? That's so, so important. OK. So, yeah, I mean, things will go by. You know, I, I missed out on many opportunities in my life because of because of basing things on how I feel or maybe because of uh, I, I didn't feel motivated. You know, that's another one. I'll do a whole different video on that. I don't feel motivated. And I say, look, don't wait to feel motivated. Motivation just happens. You can't just wait until you feel that. At days, I feel very motivated. I'm human. Maybe I don't feel motivated the next day, but I do things anyway. I don't wait for that feeling of motivation. I don't wait for that feeling to, right, I'm going to do this today. I just do it anyway, okay? And, and those feelings do come because I, I'm not sat in right waiting for it. I'm not desperate to feel a certain feeling, okay? But just going back to some personal examples of mine, for example, I used to play cricket when I was up to about 18 years old um, and obviously my OCD got really, really bad and I gave that up and I was playing at a very good level for my age. Um, and I just gave that up because obviously now I'd view it very differently, being recovered from OCD, I'd obviously view it differently now to carry on playing. But back then it all felt too much fear of being overwhelmed, uh, fear of um, sort of wasting my life in regards to well, I'm doing this anyway and I don't really want to do it. But that was from a sense of I, I was so I was so anxious, so guilty anyway, that's why I wasn't enjoying it. I loved playing cricket, but I just didn't enjoy it because of how I felt. So do you see what I did there? I acted on how I felt and then gave everything up. Not many things like that. I gave up a college course um, prematurely because of how I felt. I couldn't focus or just gave it up. Um, you know, that I was potentially missing out on a career. In, you know, studying accounting at the time. I was potentially missed out on a career in accountancy because of that. Now, go back to the cricket example. I potentially missed out, not so on a career, but a, a meeting, you know, social side and then having a good time playing cricket um, and getting better at cricket. Uh, meeting, you know, traveling the world and touring, I, I missed out on that because of how I felt when I made a, I made a knee-jerk sudden decision based on feeling crap. 
Um, but yeah, I don't I didn't look back and regret that. Well, healthfully, I look back and go, well, I could have done that differently, but it plays no part of my life because, you know, life's are changing all the time. I'm ever changing. You know, the revolving door um, theory that people talk about is where, well, obviously that door's shut now and then you look at other things. So doors are constantly opening and shutting. Um, so it's looking back with healthy regret what maybe could have been but it's a waste of time because what well, is done now you can't go back and change that it's like with anything like a real event false memory city you can't go back and change things you can only change how you view that today you can only change your perspective on that thing today and that's how I go about life. So if I expect change, then what I think, what output do I put into that? You know, what can I do to get that change? How can I, ch how can I change myself or change my habit or change my structure to get the desired outcome? Because I hear it all day long, Sam, I want this. I say, what are you doing about it? Or oh, nothing. I just hope it happens. Or maybe I'm just half-heartedly or light-heartedly putting into work. No, if you want change, you've got to really go for it. Obviously, balance with that, not go and spend it all day long trying to go for something. No. But balance, you know, if, you, if your goal is recovery, you're not spending all day focused in your whole life just on recovery, you know, because you need to bring it for the ride and live life with it there. Um, if you're trying to build a business, for example, if you spend every minute of every day focused on the business, then you probably you need to spend too much time on it and you wouldn't actually focus on other things. Maybe relationship falls apart or maybe your social life falls apart or maybe you develop unhealthy habits in regards to uh, sort of, you know, maybe you're eating crap because you you know, you just, just you work all the time. The, the point is that we can't just go all in and that's it. You know, you've got, to, you've got to think about other things as well whilst looking to change the habits of what's going to help you get the desired outcome. Okay, I think that's so, so important. Um, I mean, I talk about a bit of personal self. I don't want to go on too long, but uh, what I really want you to think about as we come to the end of this video is what more can you do? Can you change that habit more? Can you leave your comfort zone more? Are you expecting things to change and you're not putting in the input? You're not actually putting in the work expecting things to change. I hear it all day long. I want you to really look at yourself in the mirror and go, right, could I do that more? Why aren't things changing? What's held me back? What's holding me back? That's not to watch this video and expect a quick fix. No, remember the time frame, 18 months to two years, but that's a very loose time frame. There is no time frame to recovery, but just that's a very real, realistic approach of looking at it. 18 months, two years, and then judge it from there. Okay, so really think, am I doing enough? Am I expecting way too much of the work I'm putting in? Okay, really think about these things. Habit changes, structure changes, lifestyle changes, belief changes, behavior changes. They're underestimated so much along the journey. Okay, something to really, really think about.